Hello all. Today we are going to learn about Kinesis Data Analytics. So before actually diving into any service or working on it, I always like to answer the WH questions of the service because that will help you to know why the service is first of all used uh, instead of directly using it uh, just because it's available. So Kinesis Data Analytics, it's a data analytic platform available in AWS and uh, from the term data analytics itself, it's very clear that it's for it's used for some kind of processing. So it's specialized to be used in real time processing and real time processing uh, can acquire data from any real time source. For example, IOT sensors that is actually giving out uh, the device information in a second by second basis, or it could be from a Twitter feed where you can just download the uh, vlogs that you have written and based on that you can come out with a sentiment analysis. So any real time data where the data is actually changing on a second by second or a minute by minute basis. So this Kinesis data analytics stream, it's used to read those uh, streaming data, analyze it and then give out a result to a destination. So traditionally before uh, real time streaming, there was only batch streaming where you actually get all the data over a period of time save it and then run your analytics on top of it. So what is different from that is like you can take real time decisions on uh, on the problems in your hand. For example, let's say that you have installed IoT sensors in a, a nuclear power plant where it is actually going to record the temperature of each and every device operating in the power plant and it's going to send out those information uh, to your stream. If you are actually listening to the stream and analyzing the stream, you can actually set the thresholds. Like if the temperature goes beyond this point, then it means that there is some issue with the device. So with that, you can actually take a real time decision, like go and check the uh, equipment that is under problem instead of waiting for it to blow up. So I have given out examples over here as well, uh, a live leaderboard where you actually uh, maintain the gaming uh, platforms uh, leaderboard like who is actually winning uh, in which point and why why do we use uh, kinesis data analytics there are so many platforms available in the cloud or in open source to actually do your data analytics function on real time data why we go for kinesis data analytics first of all it actually gives an interface with sql which many of the programmers are like well aware of so you don't have to learn any new programming language to actually use your Kinesis data analytics. And it also has uh, so many inbuilt advanced analytic techniques like uh, uh, random cut forest, which is a technique that was actually built by Amazon people themselves, which can be used for um, anomaly detection. For example, you get a credit card swipe information. So you can use this algorithm to check whether the uh, swipe was like genuine or it's not proper. So all these kind of things you can do just with logging into your AWS console. You don't have to maintain the infrastructure or you don't have to write any code to do it. Just use whatever is already been written, which is why Kinesis Data Analytics is like the uh, very popular platform. And where it is being used, again, we already saw wherever there is real time data that needs to be processed there, uh, you can use your Kinesis Data Analytics. So these are some of the um, applications where you can use for example you can use in log analytics you collect log information of all the services in aws and then you analyze it to understand what are the most commonly faced errors so that you can correct them in your next release clickstream analytics is again like with respect to the ad platform like how many people are clicking on your ads so those kind of data also can be analyzed and processed in real time iot is again uh, like sensors that you have in your house or in any industry and uh, gaming e-commerce platform like Amazon. Everywhere real-time analytics is being used because in business, time is your money. How fast you react, that's how you are like in the leading board and how it is being used. So this is like a very common gist of how it is being used. So you actually configure the incoming streaming data, like wherever it is coming from, whether it's IoT or it's from Clickstream Analytics, you configure that, write your SQL queries, like just select select queries on top of it to do some analytics, like count or group by and uh, filter out an uh, incorrect record, all these kind of any kind of uh, SQL related analytic query you can write on top of it and uh, point where you load your results. 
like where you want to save your uh, output because the analytics is going to run on real time data it's not going to store it anywhere so once the analytics is done you have to save it somewhere for like future reference or even for like uh, immediate reference so that's where uh, you use your third point so there are three options where you can actually use it one is data analytics console like aws console where you log into the console and you maintain all this stuff and there is one more option called cli which is more like unix programming linux programming uh, like you do ls ps i uh, ps like iphone ef to find out what are the running processes similarly there are something some commands which is very specific to aws just install them and you can run it sdk is like a programming language support like you have aws sdk for java python scala so all these kind of languages so if you want to write a program on top of it then you use sdk so they have all variety of options where you can actually log into data analytics do your uh, job so conceptually this is what data uh, analytics is like i told you right uh, you would have to get the source from uh, this uh, you have to configure the stream as the source so here data stream which is also again a service of um, aws where it is just going to collect it's it's not used for any analytic purpose it's just going to collect the data from your iot and then stream them to your data analytics and then data firehose this is again a service where it's like to collect in huge bulk for example if it's streaming for like continuously for 24 hours you can set up batches saying that hey collect the information batch them into like a 30 minutes interval and then uh, put them into my uh, destination so you can use these two uh, source platforms as the source for your data analytics and from there you can run your queries and then uh, obviously push it to analytical tools or you can just store it in your destination that is your choice so this is just a conceptual diagram the low level diagram would be in this way so you have your data stream data firehose both as input stream then you will have uh, you can have also have a reference table this is not mandatory it's like optional for example uh, if you have like 10 or let's not say 10 let's say we have 100 devices of iot then probably you would have something called device id so there would there should be a mapping right like uh, device 1 actually points to refrigerator iot device 2 points to vehicle iot so these kind of mapping details you can store it in s3 because they're not going to change uh, on a day-to-day -day basis so once you actually get your stream data you can use this reference data to join like you do it in select queries and then you can again push it to your output streams which is again kinesis data stream or data firehose and from data streams and firehose you can push it to any kind of so, uh, destination like s3 redshift elastic search even though they are not mentioned over here you have like wide variety of options to where you can push it out and there is an option to actually push the error records as well because nothing is perfect in the world even if you write like 100 percent sure code there will be some data which will not fit into it so instead of losing them altogether, you can actually point them to error stream and then similarly write them to any destination that you're interested in and uh, these are the key features most of them which we already discussed so it's a real-time processing engine where uh, you don't have to maintain any service you just point your source run your sql and then store them to destination you don't have to like configure which machine to use what is the size of the machine that you have to use nothing like that and you pay only for your use so if you're running you're going to use the data analytics for one hour you're going to pay for one hour if you're going to delete the data analytics then you're not going to pay anything for it which we'll see in our lab as well and uh, so this is actually used to build streaming applications so when i say streaming application ingesting the streaming data and doing some kind some kind of analysis on top of it or some kind of aggregation on top of it so it suppose uh, supports so open source uh, platform called apache flink which integrates with a wide variety of other sources in aws and there is another option which is a sql option that i told about where uh, you actually write your sql queries because flink is again a language which you have to learn so sql is like whatever you do in your regular database so sql and you have an option to write it in scala java python whichever you want based on the developers need there is everything available in your sdk and it has inbuilt integration with other resource services like i mentioned above uh, even these uh, services like firehose elastic such as three everything is like integrated with the data analytics you don't have to build an integration on top of it so source and target they are already integrated so you just have to give the names in order to use them you don't have to make a connection between these two different services in aws because they are already integrated thank you